Usually people think it's okay to run your algo trading sessions locally or that it's even safer this way. But over the years, I faced a lot of problems which I could have avoided if instead I used a remote server. So in this video, I will show you why do you need the setup, where to get high quality and affordable servers, how to set it up for Jesse, and how to make it secure so that only you can access it. Let's get started. There are many reasons, but I'll give you three. Number one, servers have fast and reliable internet connections. For example, my Hesner servers usually have a gigabit connection, which is way faster than my local one. Number two, you don't want to worry about how to use your computer while your algo is running. Maybe you want to restart or shut down your computer, and if you're running a live session, then you can't do that. Number three, Linux is the best OS for production, but most of the development machines are either Windows or Mac OS. So by using a server, you can still develop on your operating system of choice, but run your production code on Linux. When it comes to choosing a cloud server provider, what we're looking for is a good balance of the quality and the price. If you are living in the US, I highly recommend using DigitalOcean. Their starting server, which is more than enough for our use case, starts from 5 bucks a month. But if you use my link, you can get it started for free. The other cloud provider that I personally recommend and use is Hetzner. Their starting plan offers more resources for the same price. And if you use my link, you will get 20 euros free credits. I already have a Hetzner account, so I'm gonna log in. Projects on your Hetzner account are like folders on your machine. They're used for organizing your servers. You can create a new one or choose an existing one. I'm gonna choose the tutorial project and click on add server. I will change the location to Germany. Ubuntu 2004 is exactly the image that I want. The first server plan is more than enough for my use case, so I will leave that be. Next, I have to choose the SSH keys of my computer so that the server can recognize me. In your case, if your account is new, you probably have to generate SSH keys and add it here. And at the end, I will change the name of this server to something that I can remember, such as tutorial one. The server is gonna be ready in just a few seconds. All right, now let's copy the IP address of my server, open the terminal app and enter SSH, root, add sign, and then paste the IP address. Because this is the first time we are connecting to this server, it's going to ask us about whether or not we trust this fingerprint. Just go ahead and enter yes. There are a couple of ways for setting up Jesse on a server. I use Docker because it's easier to set up, run, and also install future updates of Jesse. So I'll start by installing Docker itself on my server. This is a fresh VPS. So if I run the docker compose command, I should see the command not found error, which is expected because we haven't installed docker yet. Once again, I will open the documentation website and head over to the docker section. Here, there are two commands for installing docker and docker compose. So let's copy the first one and paste it here. This should take a few seconds. Now let's copy the second command, which is for installing docker compose. Now if I run the docker compose command one more time, it should work. If you're watching this, I'm guessing you already have a Jesse project. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will be creating a new one. To create a new Jesse project inside my local machine, first I have to make sure that I am inside the correct directory. Next, from the documentation website, I will copy the command for creating a new Jesse project. What this command is doing is cloning a git repository from github and specifying a custom name. So I'll go ahead and change the name to tutorial deploy. This command creates a new project so I will cd into tutorial deploy. Next as it is mentioned by the documentation I will create my .env file. Notice that the .env file is ignored by git which means it doesn't get pushed into github. And that's because the whole point of the .env file is to be unique to the environment you're running it in, in this case being our production server. 
Because this project was pulled from another GitHub repository, by default it assumes that we are the owners of the repository, which we are not. So I'm just going to remove Git entirely from this code base so that I can later push it into my own GitHub repository. I can do that by typing rm-rf.git. It's always a good practice to keep your code in a repository because it's easier to track changes, keep a backup, and maybe even share your code with others if you need to. So instead of uploading my code directly into the server, I'm going to push my code into a GitHub repository and then pull it into the server. Before I move on, I'm going to quickly create a new private repository on my GitHub account. I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to click on the plus button here and choose new repository. My repository name is going to be tutorial deploy. And next, make sure to set the privacy settings into private, otherwise everyone can see your code. And finally, click on create repository. All right, now let's move back to the terminal app to push our code repository. Here are the commands for initiating a Git repository and pushing it into GitHub. Git init, which is for initiating Git inside our source code. Next, I will run git add dot. What this will do is prepare all the files for being pushed into GitHub. Now that all the files are added, I'm going to create my first commit. git commit hyphen m, and then I will pass a message. Typically, the first message is always initial commit. Recently, GitHub changed their primary branch name from master into main. So we need to tell our local git to use main as the primary branch instead of master. We can do that by typing git branch hyphen capital M main. Next, I will set my remote origin address into what GitHub just gave me by typing git remote add origin. Let's quickly copy the origin from GitHub and paste it here. Now we can push by typing git push hyphen u origin main. If I move back to GitHub and give the page a refresh, I should see my source code being uploaded here. Because I set the privacy settings of my repository to private, my server needs to first authenticate to gain access to the source code. So if I try to run git clone and then paste in the address of my repository here, it tells me that I do not have the correct access rights. We can fix this by authenticating our server into our GitHub account. There are a couple of ways for doing this. My recommended way is using SSH keys. So I'm gonna create a new SSH key for my server so that I can add it into my GitHub account. I can do that by typing ssh-keygen. Press enter to skip the other steps. Now I'm going to copy my SSH keys from this location. So I'm going to copy it and write cat and paste it here. Next, I will select the whole thing, copy it, open GitHub again, go into my settings, and then choose SSH and GPG keys. New SSH key, paste it here. The title doesn't really matter, but I will type in tutorial. So if I try to pull the repository one more time, it should work now. By pressing the up arrow button on my keyboard, I can use the previous commands again. Let's check the existing files by typing ls. Actually, there are a couple of extra files here because of the whole installation that I just did, so let's remove those. I can do that by typing rm and then the name of the file. The snap directory is also extra, so let's remove that by typing rm hyphen rf snap. One more time, and we're good. <laughs> I will cd into my project. Let's write the ls command one more time to see if the source code is here. Everything looks good. Now let's create the .mv file by typing cp.mv.example.mv. Now using the nano editor, I will open my .mv file. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to change the default password from test into something that no one can guess. And the second line that I need to change is to enter my license API token. I need to create a new one, so I'm going to open Jesse website. I'm already inside the API token page, but if you are not, you can find it here. From here, I can create an API token. 
The name of it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use tutorial and then copy this API token and paste it inside your .mv file. Press Ctrl X and then hit Y to save the file. We should be good to go now. So let's cd into the Docker directory. And all that I have to do for installing Jesse and starting the containers is to type docker compose up. If I were using Docker inside my local machine, this should have been enough. But because it is on a remote server, it is important that I run the process in the background so that after I close my terminal app, the session will continue to work. To execute Docker in the background, all I need to do is to pass hyphen D at the end of it. This command is going to pull all the required images from Docker Hub, install the live thread plugin, and run the containers for us. This should take a few seconds and maybe one minute, so I'll just skip the video. Alright, everything looks fine now. So now I should be able to open the dashboard from my browser. The URL of the dashboard is going to be the IP address of my remote server, followed by the port, which by default is 9000. Now I'm going to copy the strong password that I set earlier and paste it here. Everything looks fine. And if I can start a paper trading session, that means everything, including the live trade plugin, is working fine. And yes, everything is indeed working properly. On your Hessner account, go into your servers page, open the firewall section, click on create firewall. In order to make our server secure, we have to restrict the inbound traffic. The outbound traffic, however, should be open because we want our application to be able to communicate with the exchanges that it wants. And there is really nothing to worry about there. So we don't have to add any rules to the outbound section of the firewall. On the inbound section, however, we're going to change things. According to the default configurations, all IP addresses, whether version 4 or version 6, have access to the 22 port which is used for the SSH protocol. First, find the IP address of your local machine. For that, you can use a couple of tools. I'm using a website called ICANHASIP.com, but feel free to use any other method that you like. After copying my IP address, I will head back to the Hetzner page and remove the default inputs by clicking on them and pressing the delete button on my keyboard. Then I will paste in my IP address. The TCP protocol is fine. The 22 port is also fine. So the first rule is done. For the second rule, I will again paste in my IP address and change the protocol into TCP. And for the port, I will enter 9000. Everything looks fine now. So I'll just click on the Create Firewall button. So if I change my IP address and try to enter the dashboard again, it shouldn't work. Now if I change my IP address back to what it was inside the firewall and try again, it should work just fine. Let's say that I want to make a few changes to my strategy. Since I'm using Git as my version manager, it's important to never push changes directly to the server. So instead, I'll push them to my GitHub repository first, and then I'll pull them into the server. So I will open the project inside my code editor. Then I will look at my strategy from the strategies directory, example strategy, and init file. Let's change a few things. For example, return true here. And inside my golang method, I will say just submit one buy order for the quantity of one, and the order price should be the current price. To commit my changes and push it into GitHub, I could either use the terminal app or a Git management app with a GUI. A good example of that is called GitHub Desktop, which is what I usually use myself. It's free to use and also supports all major operating systems. But in this video, I'll be using the built-in Git management in VS Code. As it shows us, there has been one modified file that hasn't been committed yet. To commit the file, click on the plus button here and type a message for our commit. I will just say update strategy and press command or on Windows it will be control and enter to save it. 
To push this commit into GitHub, I will click on the three dots button and choose push. Now if I open my GitHub repository one more time, I should see the changes here. As you can see, the last commit message is called update strategy, which is exactly what I sent and it's been pushed 27 seconds ago. Now let's move back into the server to pull the changes. First, I will make sure that I am inside the correct directory. Then inside the root of my JC project, I will run git pull. Right, it looks good, but let me show you how you can make sure that the last commit is indeed the one you just pushed. To see the latest commits, enter git log. And the last one is indeed the message that I gave it. Whenever you start a new session with Jesse, it will use the most recent strategy code. And there is no need to restart Jesse itself. Constantly releasing new versions of Jesse containing improvements, bug fixes, new features, and so on. So it's really important to update your Jesse installation regularly. Don't worry though, it's really easy to do. Let me show you. First, head over to the top right corner of the dashboard and click on the About button to open the About section. Here you can see the Jesse version that you have installed, and below it you will find the version for the Live Thread plugin. If at the time that you are watching this or in the future, a new version is out and you want to update to that one, first make sure to terminate your running sessions. Then head back into the server. And because I'm using the Docker setup, all I have to do is to enter the Docker directory once again. And first to stop the running containers, I will run docker compose stop. Now if I head back to the dashboard and give the page a refresh, it shouldn't work. Now to pull the latest version of the JC image, which has everything installed on it, all I have to do is to run docker compose pull. Since no newer version of the docker image has been released since the last time I pulled it, it didn't download anything. But in your case, if there has been indeed a newer version, you should see a short progress bar. And lastly, to start the containers again, I will run docker compose up hyphen D. I'll give it a few seconds for the containers to start again in the background. And if I refresh the page one more time, it should work. If I open the about section, I should see the updated versions now. If you want to use the remote server, not just for live trading, but also for a strategy development, then make sure to watch my previous video. If you're interested in tutorials about algo trading, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.